Good morning. Hope you're having a great week. We're on day 57. As you can see, we're almost done with this unit. And that's a good thing. There's very little left after this. We're going to use the, the definite integral in a variety of situations. And the definite integral is, that's this thing here, from A to B, of something. Uh, I'll call it F of X, but it didn't have to be. It could be F prime, big F. It could be whatever. Total accumulation. A as we know, it represents generically just as the accumulated area under the curve from A to B. But area could have a conceptual understanding, not just the amount of paint I need to buy to paint that. All right. So we'll start out recalling what this meant. The derivative with respect to x of some amount of amount. It's a rate of change. We know that's a rate of change. Rate of change of, of amount. Or you can say the rate at which the amount is changing. For example, if water is being drained from a swimming pool and R of T represents the amount of water that is in the pool in feet at any given time, R stands for the amount of water in the pool measured in hours, then R prime of T would represent the rate that the amount of water is changing. The amount of water that is changing. So D, DX really should have been probably D, D, T, but you get the point the author is talking about doing a derivative of R is our prime. That's not too exciting. What would the units be of, of our prime? And let's try to keep it with context. Just like we did up here. We talked about uh, our prime. Our prime is, is a rate he wants units. So that would be a rate has to be something per time, some change of something per time. That's a rate. So we were measuring the water in cubic feet. That's the amount of water. So We'll say cubic feet per hour. Now, remember what the integral does. It accumulates underneath that curve. So when you integrate uh, the rate... It accumulates what was changing. So in the, the context of the example of above, what would it represent if I write the integral from A to B of R prime of T dt equals R R. Now R B minus R A. Remember, we were integrating cubic feet 
per hour comes out to R, which stood for uh, the amount of water that would have been back into feet. So I'm going to write, as we integrate from A to B, our prime of T, which does equal R, because it removes the derivative of B, minus R of A, and it will stand for the, the amount of change in the water level in feet. I could say I could add it from time t is a time t is b. That's I will leave it at that. The table below represents velocity of particle at given values of t. t is measured in minutes. All right, this is very similar to a problem we've already done. Approximate the integral from 0 to 30 of, of V of t using midpoint Riemann sums. And how many does he want? Well, he doesn't say. But uh, let's see. One, two, three will work fine for midpoint. Okay. Now, that's a rate. So just, just conceptually, we knew the other day that when I was integrating from some time A to B of a rate, I integrated velocity, or did I put, uh, I already, it was already velocity, that's silly. When I integrated velocity, it was the change of position. It represents the change of position from A to, to B. That's what it represents. How will I work it out? I don't have any positions in a table to use, so I have to use the accumulation of the rate, the change, the accumulation of the change of rate. So midpoint using this block here. There's my midpoint. Pick up with the end piece here and use this block. Pick up the middle there. Pick up the endpoint here. Use the midpoint here. So the integral from 0 to 30 of v of t dt will be approximately, because I don't have every value of time. I don't even know. It's not a, it's not a curve that I can definitely guarantee what's happening between 0 to 10. All I know is that at 5, where it is, and it looks like it was climbing and still climbing. It's all that I do know that it was climbing, but I don't know. I don't know what happened at 1. Could have done this at 1. Could have done this at 1. Who knows? So this is an approximation. Remind sums are rectangles. From 0 to 10 was a width of 10. 
the height of that rectangle is f of 5, which is 1.6. I'll add it to from 10 to 20 is 10 again. I wish I'd have looked ahead and I would have factored out the 10 because they all look like 10. F of 15 is 3.1 plus 10. F of 25 is 1.6. 16 plus 31 plus 16 again. 30, 40, 50, 62, 63. And the unit is position. The change of, the accumulated change of position would have to be positions. Feet. What is the value, as I integrate from 5 to 25, of A of T? That stands for acceleration. So remember what we did before when we had this in the previous homework. That when we integrated acceleration, it was an accumulation of the change underneath the acceleration curve which is velocity. So it's V of 25 minus V of 5. Now, I don't have acceleration values in the table. So this time, as luck would have it, I do have the velocity numbers. So I can say is approximately to V of 25 up at the table. V of 25 right here, 1.6 minus V of 5, 1.6. That would represent zero. And what's my unit of velocity? says right here, feet. Per second. Okay. That was fun. Okay. New scenario. The temperature of water in a tub is modeled by a strictly increasing, which means it always increases. It doesn't have any, it doesn't have any dips like between the values, like I suggested in the last problem. It's constantly going up. And he says it's twice differentiable. So that means we know that it's not constant. Because you can only take the derivative of that one time. Once you take the derivative of this, this slope is zero. You can't take the derivative again. It doesn't exist. For example, if y equals 3, y prime is zero. It no longer exists. y double prime, it doesn't have a second derivative. Once you're at zero, you can't take the derivative again. And... W, well, that's what that uh, function is, twice differentiable function called W, where W of T is measured in degrees Fahrenheit. He did say the temperature was being uh, measured, okay? And T is measured in minutes. So... In zero minutes, the temperature of the tub was 55 degrees. In four minutes, it's 57. Ah, I like this tub. In nine minutes, it's 61. It's getting nicer and nicer and nicer. 
using the data table, estimate the value of W prime of 12. Where's 12? 12's in here somewhere. So I have to use the secant line to estimate the change of temperature. W prime of 12 will be approximately the W of 15 minus the temperature at 9. Those are my y2, y1 over x2 minus x1. Why? I'm going to write x1. Why am I going to do that? 9. Okay, plug it in. Well, I don't have to do, I don't have to do approximate again. It's already set approximate, so is 67.9 minus 61.8 divided by 15 minus 9. And uh, I know every time I do my mental math, you guys always tell me I messed up. I know. It's normal for me. I'm used to it. 9 minus 8 is 1. There's a decimal point. 7 minus 1 is 6, and 6 minus 6 is 0, over 15 minus 9 is 6. So I could go to the calculator, but what's the fun in that? It goes into 1, then I have a 10, uh, that becomes, I better do it right, 6. Zero, bring down the one. I don't even care about the decimal. Bring down a zero. So it was a zero and a one. And that's a six, that's a four. Bring down another zero. Six. That's 36, another four. I think it's going to be constant. So I'm going to leave it at... Uh, 1.016 and it was W so it's going to be degrees Fahrenheit per was it minute or second minute Oh, what am I doing? The answer is down here. Degrees Fahrenheit per minute. Same thing. You know, on the AP test, I would leave. I wouldn't even do the division. Uh, what if I integrate underneath the W prime curve? Obviously, if you integrate a rate, you're going to get W. That's what happens. 0 to 20, definite integral of W prime of T will be W of 20 minus W of 0. Use correct units. Interpret the meaning. So, just getting this value will not give you your point. You definitely have to connect it to the units. And to get the second point, most likely you'd have to give a good interpretation. Up to the table, I have Ws. That's a 71. That's my value. And a 55.0. So allow me to just put 71 minus 55. And I believe that's 16. 16 what? What was W in? Degrees Fahrenheit. 
that gets you the point. What does it mean? It was that the amount of temperature that changed. So just say, it's temperature change. The integral from zero to 20, W prime of T, DT, I forgot it up there, is the amount of temperature that changed from 20 minutes Actually, what started at zero from zero minutes to twenty minutes. Got to you. Got to write the whole thing, guys. That's the justification. For twenty is less than or equal to t, which is less than or equal to twenty-five. The function w models the temperature change has a first derivative given by, thank you very much, since I didn't know what the function was. There it is. That's W prime. Based on this model, what is the temperature of the water? What is it in degrees Fahrenheit? I should tell you something. At time, T is 25. So how do I get temperature out of temperature change? You said it. I am going to do the antiderivative. And he wants it at 25. So I need to have two numbers, one being 25, and one could be 0. Can we read the problem again? <laughs> now that I reread the problem again, look what I just saw. Use the limits that I have here, sorry. So I'm gonna have to change that to a 20. A 20 to 25. All right, because he told me to, okay. That's gonna be when I do the integral of W prime, it strips out the prime leaving W of 25 minus W of 20, which fortunately both numbers are in the table. No, they weren't. Oh no. I only have, I don't have 25 in the table. Oh. What was he doing? This is the one I want. <laughs> I want to find this. I'm I literally am gonna have to write out the function. And write. He gave it to me for a reason. He knew I didn't have all the information. Point four square root of T cosine of 0 0.06 t dt. Here is a function you cannot integrate by hand. It's going to be a calculator problem. So let me key that in my calculator and make sure what I would do if I were you, put this function in y1 Raise the one half. 
and go to your home screen and do math number nine, that's function integrate. And if you're able to put in the limits up here, here, y1 with respect to x, hit enter, that'll give you the answer. So I'm going to do it, and you do it also. You should pause this, get out your calculator, get it to work. Okay. I went to type it in. I realized the square root did not go through the whole thing. I need to erase my square root. Dun, 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 dun. See, I had to look at the problem again because I didn't have it memorized. I'm trying to key it in the calculator. And that meant this one half only went to this one. That one, let me erase it. Cleanliness is next to godliness. And I could have kept that parenthesis. Oh, while I'm at it. Cosine of point. Zero, double check it, make sure I get it. Zero six. Point zero six T. There. So the advantage I have, I'm putting in a Y1 so I can make a change whenever I need to. Okay, now pause it. Again. I'm back. Did you miss me? This is 2.043. And remember what we were doing was equal to the W25 minus W of 20. W of 25 is not in the table, so I that's why I had to do all this hard work. W of 20 is 71.0. So, W of 25 will equal to my last answer, 2.043 added to 71. That's going to be 73.043. What would be my units? W in the table, if you remembered, was degrees Fahrenheit. It's the temperature of the tub, so it's degrees Fahrenheit. That's, hopefully you agree with me. Hopefully I didn't add wrong, 73.043. I'm going to stick with it. Another problem. A pan of biscuits is removed from an oven, which the Amount of time, T is in zero minutes. The temperature of the biscuits is 100 degrees Celsius. So that tells me that when you took the biscuits out of the oven, they were already hot. 100 degrees Celsius is the same as uh, 212 degree Fahrenheit. So it's they're hot. Uh, the rate at which they... The temperature of the biscuits is changing, is modeled by this wonderful function. And you notice B prime. It's the rate of change of the biscuits. Do you know what that curve looks like? If it was an E to a power, that was positive power, the biscuits would have been heating up. But because that's negative... We know the biscuits are cooling. They're cooling. It's not, it's not going up. It's going down. It's fli it flipped it. Okay. There's actually two flips. 
there's a, a flip on the Y and there's a flip on the, the X. So, yeah, I think I'll agree with something like that. Uh, that's the temperature change, by the way. Find the value of B prime of 3. B prime of 3, I would love to say, would be a piece of cake. But it's not. It's a piece of biscuit. Uh, negative 113.84. E raised to the negative 0.173 times 3. I'm not doing this in my head. This is definitely a calculator problem. So, pause the video, get your calculator out, and give me what the change of temperature of the biscuits after three minutes. I know the answer has to be less than 100. So, at least when you type it in, you'll have something to... Uh, think about. I'm going to go do it too. Negative 8.236. Of course, it's less than 100. <laughs> but that we're and I asking for the temperature of the biscuits. We're asking for the change. So when I keyed it in, I go, ah, huh? how do I have a negative? It was the change. The change is negative. That means after three minutes. Well, let's write that out. So he asked for. That was uh, degrees Celsius per minute. That's the unit. And he did ask for that. Use correct units right here. It's a change. B prime was a rate of change. What does it mean? That at the time, three minutes, the biscuits... Were still cooling at a rate of eight point two three six degrees Celsius per minute. Why did I not use negative? Because I said they were still cooling. You could have also used the word. Uh, was decreasing still cooling does mean decreasing as long as you say that the temperature was changing so you could say temperature was decreasing I'm saying they're still cooling it's the same thing sketch the graph of W prime okay so I need to go to my calculator again pause it you do it. Okay. I saw that the function never crossed the x-axis. And I had something that was like asymptotic. Something like that. Also, time never became negative. So, there's my picture of B prime. Explain what this picture in context of the problem. B prime of T represents the change of temperature of the biscuits after they were removed from the oven. The graph shows that the biscuits are constantly cooling 
because b prime of t is less than zero always. You could also say that b prime of t was greater or they were cooling faster right when they came out of the oven. It makes sense. They had more heat to give off. Once it levels off and it doesn't change anymore, we would probably call that, when, it, when the temperature doesn't change anymore, we would call that room temperature. So I, thought, I have to go back to my calculator to find out where that might be. Um, he wants me to look at time t is 10. And time t is 10 is pretty close to where the rate of change might be more constant, which means that uh, if the rate of change actually gets up there to the zero, it'll be room temperature. But I don't think in 10 minutes the biscuits are room temperature. I think in 10 minutes the biscuits will just will be delicious. Okay. So let's find T of 10, the temperature of the biscuits. How do I get the temperature out of B prime, when B prime stood for the rate of change of the temperature, you said it, definite integral. And they started cooling at zero minutes from the oven. We're going to 10. We're still going to integrate B prime. When we get done with that, dt, That'll give us B of 10 minus B of 0. We want B of 10. I have B of 0. That was 100. I do not have this. Do you remember a few minutes ago I told you to key this in your calculator? Aren't you so glad? Well, this here. Aren't you so glad you did? If you put that in Y1, which I did, I'm now going to be able to use it again. On the AP test, it's all a matter of saving time. So put your functions in the calculator as you see them, Y1, Y2, Y3. Then when you need it, I needed Y, Y1 evaluated at a value. That was relatively simple. Now I need Y1 integrated home screen math number nine. And I'll be able to find out what this answer is. So you pause it, get your answer, and come back. We'll meet, we'll meet again here in a minute. Negative 65.817. Is the accumulated temperature equal to, that meant that there's been more cooling going on, B of 10 of what I'm looking for, minus the 100. So B of 10 will be negative 65.817 plus 100. I'll go get out my calculator. I don't want to mess up those decimals. Thirty-four point eight one three degrees Celsius. That was these were temperatures. Okay, let's see what's next. Another problem. How many do we got left? Thank goodness, I'm tired. Got to go have some biscuits. A cylindrical can of radius 10 millimeters is used to measure rainfall in Somerville. So I got this can outside. Just this little can that's collecting the rainwater. That's how they do it. 
Actually, that means it can. They actually put a, a it's a, just a small thing in your yard, and it measures millimeters. You can use a can. It'll also work. During the first five days of a 60-day period, in the first five days, he measured three millimeters of rainfall. The height of the water in the can is modeled by this function S. S of T is measured in millimeters. T is measured in days. So there's my time. All right, pay attention to my last time I, I wasn't paying attention. Five to 60. Well, I suppose because he didn't measure anything until the first five days. That was his starting measurement. So he measured it in the first five days. And he had three. Then from there on, the, the rain accumulated in the can. Uh, the rate at which the height of the water is rising is given by this function. The rate. See the rate? Is is this? I know this is going to be a calculator problem because it's this trig with this 0 0.03 t, and it's just not normal. So I can't do it in my head. Find what the value of ten to fifteen of s prime of t. Just find that value. Use correct units, and of course, always justify what this thing is meaning. Integrate. 0 to 15 of s prime of t. And you know what I'm going to do this time? I am not going to write out this equation. What am I going to do with this equation? I'm putting it in y1. I'm just going to put it in y1. Double check it that you got it correct. Okay, because you're going to use it probably a couple this is like a free response problem you're probably going to use this a couple times if you want to graph it and look at it between 5 and 60 go for it but it really may not be uh we may not need to have it graph this time i don't see he's not asking but um for sure you're going to need the function so put it in y1 and go to home screen Math number nine, function integrate, and let's get this answer. I'll be right back. Meet you back here in about two minutes. 11.159, and that would be accumulation of millimeters. I almost made a mistake because I forgot, I almost forgot to key in the plus 1.5 in this. But it's a good thing I just copied this equation in. Probably I would have dropped it off if I would have wrote it down. Because when I first was looking at it, I didn't see it. But anyway, 11.159. Let me check my calculator again. I may have forgotten that number coming from one second to another. Yep, 11.5 millimeters. And use the correction. Explain the meaning. Okay. We'll say from the 10th day to the 15th day the change of rainfall is 11.159 millimeters. Next part. At the end of the 60-day period, what is the volume of water that accumulated in the can? Show your work. So here we got this cylinder that was raising as time goes on. So now we've been letting the water sit there. Here's the water sitting there 
for the whole 60 days. Now remember, we didn't start clocking till there was already water in there. There was already the three millimeters when we start the measurement. So we didn't really have any idea between zero to five what was going on. So he wants the volume of this can and volume of that can is pi r squared h. H stands for the water level. How much water has changed from zero to 60 days? How much water from zero to 60 is the definite integral accumulating that water? So we need to, we start with three millimeters of water. And then he started uh, doing the integration from 5 to 60. Because the first 5 wasn't modeled by the function. The first 5, he just said that there were 3 mil... Uh, he said, during the first 5 days, we knew we had 3 millimeters. And then... The rest of the time period, we modeled it with uh, this function called S prime of T, the change. S prime of T. So I'm just going to go S prime of T, which thank goodness, it's still in my calculator. This will give me the height of the cylinder. So, equals to 3 plus. Let's go ahead and power up the uh, machine, and let's get an answer there. I'll be right back. 163.565. That accumulates to 166. 0.565 millimeters. Volume will be pi r there it is. I was wondering why he gave me that 10 millimeter radius. Pi r squared times my height, which was my 166.565. That's 100 pi times 166.565, which I am very tempted just to leave the answer as. 166 times 100 is 166.51.5 pi millimeters cubed. I, I, I don't mind the answer. Okay, a lot of, a lot of volume in that can. A lot of, a lot of cubic millimeters. The rate at which people enter an auditorium. Oh, this is a famous kind of problem. Actually, both of these are pretty AP, very AP style problems. The rate at which people enter an auditorium for a concert is modeled by this function, R. This is people coming in. That's a rate. Even though he didn't call it R prime, that would be the rate that would be the change of the rate. This is the rate. It's just called R. It's measured in people per hour. Now, VIP tickets were sold to 100 people who are already in the auditorium. Ah, that's the same as the three millimeters of water that was already in the can when I started... Uh, 
taking time and measurements. They were already in the auditorium when the door opened up. They were sitting in there because they had like a meet and greet. Maybe they got a dinner. Who knows? They paid extra money. And they were special people. They were... They were not just a general admission. They were VIP. The doors close as the concert begins at, at TS2. So apparently they let people in for two hours. You know, just come in as you want. But then they locked it up, closed it up at two. If all the VIP ticket holders stayed and the for the start of the concert, how many people are in the auditorium? When the concert begins. Well, well. People were coming in for two hours. That's when they opened open the doors. And then they had the concert. So. Even prior to those two hours. There was already. A hundred people in the auditorium. So the concert started when the doors closed. So we started with 100 people. And we're going to integrate R of T, DT. Now, R of T is the rate of people per hour. And it was modeled by this function here, which guess where I'm going to put this? I'm putting this in Y1. I'm not even going to write it down. I'm not even going to write it down. It's just a, a lot of work to do. Oh, I need my limits. Zero to two. Why is this 100 not in there? They were there before zero. Okay. And then once we calculate this, we will know how many people. Because when you integrate the rate of change of people, you will have the number of people. All right. Let's meet back here in about two minutes. I got 1,080 people. That's what the calculator rounded to the nearest person. Now, FYI, we could have done this all by hand. 100 plus we're integrating from zero to two of uh, 1380 T cubed DT minus integrating from zero to two 675 T to the third this was T squared, I'm sorry. This is T cubed DT. And when you integrate that by hand, 100, that T cubed becomes T cubed, T squared becomes T cubed, 1380 T cubed over three. This little piece goes from zero to two. And when you plug in the zero, let me just finish this part. You plug in the top number first, 1380 times two cubed, eight over three. Then when you go plug in minus the zero, you just get a zero. So that both cases, the zero doesn't contribute anything. So minus, now I do the second part over here, minus. 675 t to the fourth over four from zero to two and again all i'm really caring about is what happened when so plug in the two 675 two to the fourth is 16 over four minus the zero of course it doesn't really matter i don't care about that so this should give me the same answer that my calculator gave i'll just challenge you and let you take a look Here we go, next page. Oh, that's the last one.
Which is your homework, which I've already posted online. I posted it yesterday. But I'm sure you can get started. So I'm going to post the video and you guys will be good to go. So have a great weekend. We do got to work hard next week. We have the STC test for some of you guys. And we'll be wrapping this unit up. Good times. Peace. Be out.